Everybody. King Obama has signed another executive order on May the 1st, your glorious leader, King Obama. And um, this one is another executive order promoting international regulatory cooperation. The dictate is designed to standardize regulations between the United States and its so-called trading partners. What is a regulation? A law. So what is actually being attempted here is a standardization of international law. It is an absolute violation of the Constitution for the United States to legislate our law outside of our borders. That's right. Considering the many international security agreements, the traders occupying our highest seats of power have entered into the latest executive order can absolutely be used to institute gun confiscation laws, regulations, without any consent by our Congress or our judici judiciary and once these foreign laws are brought to the United States under the various security agreements foreign troops will be brought in to enforce the foreign laws upon the people of the United States. So it looks like this is being done and uh, they're going to be bringing in gun confiscation through international law in the United States.
government work for us or do we work for the government? Is freedom in America a myth or a reality? Tonight, what if we didn't live in a free country? What if the Constitution were written not to limit government but to expand it? What if the Constitution didn't fulfill the promise of the Declaration of Independence but betrayed it? What if the Constitution actually permitted the government to limit and constrict freedom? What if the Bill of Rights was just a piece of paper that the government could avoid whenever it claimed the need to do so? What if the same generation, in some cases the very same people, that drafted the United States Constitution enacted laws that violated it? What if the merchants and bankers who financed the American Revolution bought their way into the new government and got it to enact laws that stifled their competition? What if the civil war that was fought in the name of freedom actually advanced the cause of tyranny? What if the federal government were the product of 150 years of stealing power and liberty and property from the states and from the people? What if our political elites spent the 20th century importing the socialist ideas of big government statism from Europe? What if our political class was adopting the European political culture from which our founding fathers fought so hard to break free? What if our political leaders no longer acknowledged that our rights come from our humanity, but insisted instead that they come from the government? What if you had to produce your papers to get out of or into our once free country? What if you couldn't board a plane or a train or a long distance bus without providing documentation, telling the government who you are and where you're going, without paying the government and without risking sexual assault? What if your local police department could shoot down, shoot down a plane? What if government agents could write their own search warrants, declare their own enemies, and seize whatever property they want? What if the feds could detain you indefinitely with no visitors, no lawyer, no judge, or no jury? What if they could just make you disappear? What if the government broke its own laws in order to enforce them? What if the government broke down your door in the middle of the night and shot and killed your dog and claimed it was a mistake? What if you were required to purchase a product that you didn't need, didn't want, couldn't afford from a company you never heard of? just as a condition of living in the United States? What if the government told you what to put in your body and not to put in your body, and how much of it? What if the government claimed that since it will be paying your medical bills, it can tell you what to eat, when to sleep, and how to live? What if the government tried to cajole and coax and compel you into behaviors and attitudes it considered socially acceptable? What if the government spent your tax money to advertise to you how great the services are that it provides? What if the government kept promising to make you safe while all the time it was stripping you of your liberties and committing crimes in your name that made you a target of more violence? What if you didn't have a right to every dollar you earned? What if the government decided how much of your earnings it will keep and how much it will let you have? What if the government took money away from you and gave it to its rich banking and corporate friends whose businesses were failing? What if the government thought it knew better than you did how to lead your life and had no problem telling you so? What if the government took credit for every success your own human actions helped to achieve? What if the government told you that only it could build roads, run schools, keep you safe, and collect the trash, and deliver the mail, even though it's never been able to do so efficiently before? What if the government spent nearly twice as much money as it took in? What if it couldn't pass a budget on a timely basis and just funded itself a couple of weeks at a time? What if the government kept borrowing money against the wealth of future generations to pay for wasteful programs today? What if you worked for the government and the government didn't work for you? What if freedom were a myth? What if we don't live in a free country? What do we do about it?
General Dempsey, you, you uh, in one of your criteria for determining uh, what we might do militarily, you say you have to ask the question whether uh, the action is worth the cost and is consistent with law. What law does the uh, United States military look to? Yeah, if I could, since uh, I'd like to address both because they are related. So cost, resources, um, risk incurred elsewhere by the use of force one other place. So, you know, it's a zero-sum game. We take them from someplace else, we use them for how long, and, and uh, that's, that's the kind of issue of cost, is it? And, of course, in blood and treasure. Um, the issue of legal basis is, is important, though. Um, you know, we, again, we act with the authorized use of military force either at the consent of a government, so we're invited in, or uh, out of national self-defense, which, and it's a very, um, there's a very clear criteria for that. And then the last one is with some kind of international legal basis, an UNSCR. Wait a minute. Uh, let's talk about an international legal basis. Um, you answer under the Constitution to the United States government, do you not? And you don't need any international support before you would uh, uh, carry out a military operation authorized by the commander in No, of course not. That's the, the, sec that's the second well, one I mentioned. I just want to know that because there's yeah. a lot of references in here to uh, international matters before we make a decision. And I want to be sure that the United States military understands, and I know you do, that uh, it, it, we're not dependent on a NATO resolution or UN resolution to execute policies consistent with the national security of the United States. So, so now, Secretary Pinella, you, in your talk, in your remarks, uh, you, you talk about uh, uh, first, we're working first. We're working to increase diplomatic isolation and encouraging other countries to join uh, the European Union and Arab League in, in uh, imposing sanctions. And then you note that China and Russia have repeatedly blocked the UN Security Council from taking action. Uh, are, are you saying, and is the President taking the position, he would not act um, if it was in our interest to do so if the UN Security Council did not agree? When it comes to uh, uh, the kind of military action where we want to build con uh, a coalition and work with our international partners, then obviously we would like to have some kind of legal basis on which to do it as we did in Libya. Now, some sort of legal basis. We worried about international legal basis, but nobody worried about the fundamental constitutional uh, legal basis that this Congress has over war. We were not asked uh, stunningly in, in direct violation of the War Powers Act whether or not you believe it's constitution. It certainly didn't comply with it. We spent our time worrying about the UN, the Arab League, NATO, and too little time, in my opinion, worrying about the elected representatives of the United States. Do you think that you can act without Congress uh, to and initiate a no-fly zone in Syria without congressional approval? You know, again, uh, our, our goal would be to, uh, to seek international permission, and uh, we would we would come to the Congress uh, and inform you uh, and determine uh, how best to approach this, uh, whether or not we would uh, want to get uh, permission from the Congress. Uh, I think those are issues we would have to discuss as we decide what to do here. Well, I'm almost breathless about that because what I heard you say is we're going to seek international approval and they will come and tell the Congress what we might do, and we might seek congressional approval. No, well, I want to just say to you, that's a big dish. Wouldn't you agree uh, you've served in the Congress? Yeah. Wouldn't you agree that that uh, would be pretty breathtaking to the average American? So would you no, like to clarify that? But I've, uh, I, I, you know, we, I've also uh, served uh, with Republican presidents and Democratic presidents who have all, always reserved the right to defend this country if necessary. But you, before we do this, you would seek permission of the international authorities. If we're, work, if we're working with an international coalition and we're working with NATO, uh, we would uh, want to be able to uh, get uh, appropriate permissions in order to be able to, to do that. That's, that's something that 
you know, all of these countries would want to have some kind of legal basis on which to act. What legal basis are you looking for? What, what entity? Well, I, obviously, the U, if, if NATO made the decision to go in, that would be one. Uh, if, uh, if, we, if we developed a, an international coalition beyond NATO, uh, then obviously some kind of UN security resolution would so be an, the basis on, for a that. So a coalition of, so you're saying NATO would give you a legal basis and uh, um, an ad hoc coalition of nations would provide a legal basis? If we, if, we, if we were able to put together a coalition uh, and uh, were able to uh, move together, then obviously we would seek whatever legal basis we would need in order to make that uh, uh, justified. I mean, you, you know, we, we can't just pull them all together uh, in a uh, combat operation without getting the, uh, the legal basis on which to act. Well, who are you asking for the legal basis from? If it's a... Uh, Obviously, if the UN passed a security resolution, as it did in Libya, we would do that. Uh, if, uh, if NATO came together, as we did in Bosnia, uh, we would rely on that. So, you know, we, we have options here uh, if we want to build uh, the kind of international approach to dealing with the situation. Well, I'm for all for having an in international support, but I, I'm really baffled by the idea that, that somehow an international assembly provides a legal basis for the United States military to be deployed in combat. I don't believe it's close to being correct. They, have, they can provide no legal authority. The only legal authority that's required to deploy the United States military is uh, the Congress and the President and the law and the Constitution. Let, let me just for the record be clear again, Senator, so there's no misunderstanding. When it comes to the national defense of this country, President of the United States has the authority under the Constitution to act to defend this country, and we will. Uh, if, it co if it comes to a, an operation where we're trying to build a coalition of nations to work together to go in and operate as we did in Libya or Bosnia, for that matter, Afghanistan, we want to do it with permissions either by NATO or by the international community.